welcome everyone uh, really happy you guys were able to take time out for uh, the act fellowship webinar uh, my name is ashray and i lead the education investments team at act i joined act about two and a half years ago I was the first person in the education investment team and i've really seen act grow from just a couple people to a full team and a much larger community so really excited to share uh, all of that and more about the fellowship with you uh, i'll be presenting with sojanya today i'll let her quickly introduce herself thanks ashtay hi everyone lovely to be meeting all of you and hope to interact with some of you going forward as well uh, i'm sojanya i lead act for women i've been here for 11 months now almost uh, and yes very excited to share more about the fellowship and answer all your questions today so before we go ahead and tell you about act in the fellowship just a little exercise to get to know everyone better to see about 25 27 people on the call uh, one question we love uh, asking folks is what are the top 3 things that you are looking for in your dream profession so what i will do is uh, i will share a link on the chat which is a link of uh, mentimeter this is a website where you can just click in and it will ask you three words and you can prompt that in so everyone please just click on the link and i'll be sharing your answers very soon any issues you can post on the chat and our team is there to help you out all right we are starting to see some responses come in impact impact is right at the center of purpose relevance food security that's really cool environmental impact work life balance that's a great one recognition i like that as well i like that impact and purpose have sort of found their way in the center and i have a feeling they're going to stay i i see community building i see growth i see collaboration giving back to the society circularity in business lots of environment minded folks today I love awesome. interdisciplinary yeah. goals as well. It looks like uh, there's a, you know, we have some consensus when it comes to purpose-driven work, focused on impact, and also growth is, I think, something that came out third, and that's really cool that folks are looking for opportunities where they can grow in as their careers. Amazing. Thank you guys. I'll go back to our presentation, and what I'll do now is uh, before I. can share about what is act uh, we do have a little video for you uh, that's really made by our anchors that talk about how act started how everyone came together in a time of covid in 2020 but more importantly how it's transformed over the last 3 years and from a volunteering uh, volunteer based uh, initiative to a full fledged for profit organization non for profit organization in a larger community so i'll play this video and then we'll get into act last saturday of march 2020 flurry of emails going around our mailboxes call it the top uh, 10 12 vc firms and then we said hey let's catch up on saturday and see as a group and a community uh, what we can do to help better prepare for this impending uh, pandemic but what we said is if there is a platform we can create which allows you to clearly sort of articulate what problems need to be solved uh, on a saturday morning i distinctly remember there was like some 15 or vcs and mikin and i were on the call and so we go uh, you know what do you need from us and he's like money in my head you know i was thinking 10 15 crores but mikin being mikin you know doesn't think small mikin said nothing less than 10 million dollars will even move the needle we knew how to raise money okay so we went and raised 100 cr we knew how to spark good companies that matches the idea so we said okay let's go and experiment it was the first time where entire ecosystem was working together as one large startup trying to make social impact happen for the country the aha moment for me was literally in 7 to 10 days this group had basically started 
providing HFNC solutions to AIMS, oxygen cylinders to a bunch of these hospitals in small and big towns of India, and that sort of seeded these Inaxel kind of oxygen helmet solutions. So this all happened in a literally 12 to 14 day period, which to me showed the power of this network. Everybody came together on this. So actually it was a highlight was the moment is where the industry came together. We were very clear that we would actually measure the impact and share that impact back with the government. And the, in, the intent of that was to have the government understand what the private sector can do if given an opportunity. What is galvanizing us is the first phase of entrepreneurial impact that we've seen in this country and what entrepreneurs can do. For the next phase, we believe a lot of these entrepreneurs would pick very different problems and hopefully large societal challenges to tackle. Hope Leon was a little bit inspired by that video and now is walking away with a little bit of information on how Act started, the kind of people that are involved. Um, now I really want to focus on what is ACT today. What do some of the folks in the room spend uh, our day-to-day -day on uh, with you know, what is our current shape and form? So first and foremost, we're a non-for-profit company that does two primary, uh, that achieves two primary functions. One, we're a philanthropic grant maker. What that means is that on a daily basis, we are searching for early stage organizations or startups that are creating some sort of impact, positive impact in the economy, whether it's on education, whether it's on environment, whether it's on health or women's employment. And we look for founders who are mission aligned and want to <coughs> scale up their organizations while serving the country. So for these organizations, we provide catalytic funding. What that means is we come in early and provide capital that is needed to grow their organizations, for them to invest in their teams, for them to uh, do impact studies and prove that they are truly making an impact out there. And our primary purpose is to help them give this capital, support them for any period of one to three years until a point where they can uh, either be sustainable themselves or are able to raise capital from other conventional sources. So in short, as a philanthropic grant maker, Axe provide innovative capital to early stage startups in our few sectors of choice. On the second part, we're also a platform, a, col a powerful collective of folks from the startup ecosystem, from the VC ecosystem, and also the nonprofit world. What that means is besides the core ACT team of 10 to 15 full-time employees, we have many, many people, some of whom you saw on the video, who are helping us make the impact we want, who are involved with us either in a volunteering capacity, in an advisory capacity, or a mentoring capacity, who are there to support our portfolio organizations, achieve the impact they want to make through any kind of non-funding non help. So both these ways of impact really come together uh, by both funding and any kind of non-monetary support we provide. And together, it, this makes us happy. So as you might have seen in the video, there are primarily four thematic areas that we currently operate in. We started with COVID, although that's transformed to general health tech. Uh, the solutions we focus are on providing uh, affordable healthcare, uh, primary healthcare, whether it's on causes like tuberculosis, diabetes, cancer, uh, and <clears throat> providing capital to innovative startups who are creating medtech devices or other solutions that can overall make these. <clears throat> Uh, these medical interventions more affordable for the masses in the country. On the education side, we are focusing on edtech interventions 
that are serving the bottom half of the country so edtech interventions that are either free of cost or affordable that can serve folks not just in tier 1 cities but children or any from ages 3 to up till 20 whether they're living in tier 3 or 4 cities or rural areas so that we can democratize education for all uh, on the third side we're focusing on environment primarily through climate tech interventions that are helping us reduce our carbon get to zero carbon emissions helping with water security and land rejuvenation and on the fourth area act for women uh, the vertical with sojanya leads is focusing on driving women's employment in the country understanding what are the key hindrances for women uh, to get jobs in the country and how we can ensure that there is ample women leadership in the economy so just as an example um, we have about 35 to 40 portfolio organizations across all portfolio uh, across our different verticals uh, we wanted to share one video of uh, our portfolio organization called vaisa that is part of the act for health portfolio that focuses on mental health through technology i think this gives a good example of what kind of solutions we partner with what kind of impact they're making on the country and what kind of founders do we want to we seek out in our day to day speeds WHO says for instance that one in four people are in distress at any time i think covid proved that it's actually one in one everybody needs help hi uh, i am ramakant i am one of the founders of wiza so wiza is delivering clinically validated robust solutions through a conversational ai platform anywhere to anyone across the world so our path to into mental health was very personal neither me nor my co-founder and spouse jo we are not therapists we are not mental health professionals but i've been a caregiver in mental health jo during the earlier part of wiser's journey she went through depression so we are very familiar with founder depression and uh, during that process we also realized with all the will in the world with all the resources in the world how hard it is for us to come forward and take help just to pull herself out jo taught herself cbt cognitive behavioral therapy and we also realized at during that time how bad the solutions were out there we decided that we had to do something about it and that's how wiser was born through the years we have heavily focused on clinical validation and proving that wiser works now we have 15 plus peer reviewed studies uh, and publications across the world the largest evidence base in the space we have published in research publications very respected publications across the world partnerships with the best institutions globally and uh, last year uh, the fda gave wiser a breakthrough device designation for our work in chronic pain we are also the number one uh, highest rated app being commissioned by the nhs the national health service in the uk we got this email from a 13 year old girl 5 months after we launched and where she wrote in and told us that she had depression she tried to commit suicide and this was the only thing which was helping her hold on and that was the point when i turned from a slight skeptic into a believer and started making me focus on working harder and making something which is really special the reasons why wiser works is because it is conversational in nature they can access this anytime anywhere even at 3 am and it is non judgmental a lot of our users tell us that they don't feel judged because it's an ai avatar it's non human it doesn't judge you since 2017 wiser has uh, gone from strength to strength uh, we are now the world's largest conversational ai platform in mental health we get a lot of our traffic from organic search and referral behavior if you look for the word therapy uh, wiser will come up in the top 3 on the play stores uh, where users across 95 countries people from across the world have written in probably more than 200,000 reviews and ratings even from a clinical outcome work we demonstrated that there's a 30 31% a reduction in depression work in chronic pain uh, in outcomes on physical function pain interference anxiety depression wiser is performing at power of better than therapist one day i was thinking about and looking for a word which described depression in hindi and uh, i don't think i could find one there are 250 million people who speak hindi in india today the moment you start trans adapting wiser into uh, hindi then you start you have a chance of reaching all those people then you have whatsapp which is used by billions of people across the world and millions in, uh, in india every day if you combine the two then you are act- multiplying access and you are expanding access by 10 times by 20 times there's no reason why for instance then if you do hindi on whatsapp you can't get from 6 million people sir to 60 million people sir and that really is the mission the little penguin is here to stay and it is changing lives right so i think you would have noticed uh, in the video and something that's very common across all 
portfolio organizations uh, in any vertical is that there being a passionate and very capable founder who wants to tackle a very critical problem in this scale mental health and wants to do it at massive scale almost country level scale i think these uh, these three things are very critical to axe philosophy and the way uh, we look at the we our approach of solving the country's problems so this is a list of the different portfolio organization we have in the three sectors uh, i wanted to share a little bit about what venture philanthropy looks like since you know, this is an area that might be new to some of uh, some of the folks joining the call uh, essentially when what we mean by venture philanthropy is uh, supporting startups who have an impact lens in a philanthropic way so while we give money to startups we give it as grants these are not equity investments so act in itself is not making money uh, we have our donors who have given us the money and uh, our intent is to get 10 times the social impact from that money rather than financial returns on a day to day what that means is we start with sourcing which essentially means where do we find out about startups like why sign the first place and how do we find them earlier on so that we can come in and support and make sure that they can stand the test of time and attract more funders the next stage is due diligence essentially once we have found startups how are we analyzing that are they a good fit for our investment thesis uh, are the founders good is the business plan makes sense and can they actually scale uh, at a country level to make the impact once we are convinced that a start this is a startup we want to support we take them to the investing committee the investing committee composes of some of the most senior folks in the bcl startup ecosystem uh, many of whom who also spoke in the intro- introduction video i showed earlier and these are folks essentially who are uh, our anchors in the investing committee who ultimately help us decide and guide us into which startups we should invest in as a after an investment is made there are few other support functions we provide just to make sure that the uh, the money is utilized well and we are providing all kinds of support to the organizations so this includes various levels of portfolio management and this includes proje- uh, programs like tech advisors where we pair senior tech experts from the for profit world with tech ngos in the non profit world uh, where hiring uh, good tech talent is a problem and through a volunteering program spending a few hours a week on a dedicated project uh, they are able to achieve the ngos goals we also do a lot of support when it comes on impact me- measurement and mne not just from a reporting standpoint but also to actually understand how much impact is each startup achieving how can we improve it and get uh, more impact in subsequent years and lastly fundraising uh, to 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 ensure ax sustainability and to make sure there's enough funding so that we can give to startups who are in need this is the community of folks that are behind all the work that goes on ax uh, i would like to focus on the left hand part of the screen the core team members uh this is these are the set of folks who are working full time uh, across the different verticals of act uh, whether it's health education environment women and also the platform team uh, which looks across all verticals uh we have our act anchors many of whom uh, also constitute our investing committee meetings in different verticals and constitute some of our board of advisor uh, board members and then we have a very large community of collaborators i've only highlighted nine here but there are really hundreds of folks who've been involved in act at different stages starting from covid to general uh, tech advisory and guidance now and essentially that is what is the unique part of act and makes up our identity that we're not just the few 10 to 15 full time folks and some of our anchors who are passionate about this but we are able to build uh, able to get a much broader network of folks uh, behind these causes and give in whatever capacity whether it's money or time so with that being uh, that being a quick introduction into act we'll actually pause for 5 minutes or so so that uh, if folks have any questions on anything i presented or generally what is act uh, we can answer uh, you can either ask your question on the chat itself and so jane and i will pick it up or you can even raise your hands and uh, we can unmute you and you can ask a quick question so either way works i see a hand up go ahead i am the name is not there but you should be able to unmute yourself and ask right i saw manish's question on how do we provide mentorship 
so that can take a few forms typically when we say we provide mentorship we are talking about mentorship to the founders of the our portfolio startups so for example ramakant in the video you just watched uh, if you can provide him mentorship on how to grow his business and tackle the many business challenges he's facing on a day to day level typically we pair founders with uh, experienced startup founders so folks like abhiraj the founder of open company or experienced people in the vc or non profit system who have led organizations for the last 10 15 20 years and uh, on a one on one basis they can provide advice on how to how can they run their business and solve their yes um, i i see a few other questions um, the people opting for health need to have specialization in that particular area uh, we'll share more about our requirements in general specialization is preferred but not always a hard requirement but we can talk more about that in the next section yeah rasik asked a very good question how do we monitor the performance of an organization we give grants to which is a really really important area uh, it can differ slightly for different sectors because in uh, in impact on environment is looks very different from an impact on education essentially each vertical has its own and has developed an impact framework over the last two and a half years Uh, so for example for education what that would mean is for each organization we are assessing how many children are they reaching in the first place how many children are leveraging the product on say a weekly or monthly basis and all the way down to how many children are truly learning which is measured through different kind of impact studies uh, on a smaller sample and for that we have external partners who help come in so we measure it in different ways uh, because a lot of our solutions are actually technology based we do have the first level of data available from these solutions but if you want to go deeper we do leverage external partners who do impact studies with a smaller sample so that we understand or we can estimate what is the total overall impact of the population the startup is dealing with great question folks really quickly can i please request people to turn their videos on it's just no fun talking to black boxes and act as an incredibly interactive and collaborative space Please turn your videos on and wave to us. Lovely, thank you. So good to see faces. Um, and don't be shy to just raise your hand and come off mute um, to share any questions. Bhavna had a really good question, Ashray. Bhavna, do you want to come off mute quickly and just share your question out loud? Uh, hi. Uh, thank you for the lovely intro. I just wanted to ask um, what the format of the fellowship would be. Would it be more learning based um or would it be more um experience like in um like within a company or within a uh, um ecosystem how does that work uh, so so bhavna in short we'll uh, all fellows will be placed within one of the act verticals so all the duties i mentioned in terms of sourcing due diligence portfolio support they will be providing along with the team so they are as good as any full time act member Uh, so you will also get the chance to see how our portfolio organizations work, but you are not put within the portfolio organization. You are still working as a member of the act, mainly part of the investing team. A great question. I see Kirija has a hand up, so you can unmute yourself now. Thank you. Um, so I was actually about to build on the previous question, which is, can we then choose our verticals, and is it possible to work across verticals, or? Is it more recommended that you focus on one and just see your nine months through in the same vertical? So, Ajinan, you want to take that? Yeah. Uh, so, Girija, the way the process is going to work is that we'll be assigning verticals to fellows based on where we see the best fit. Of course, your preferences will be taken into account, but there is also another process. Um, sorry, Girija. Yeah. There's also other factors that we look into this. So every fellow will be tagged to one specific vertical for the duration of the fellowship. Having said that, there will be enough and more experiences and opportunities to really understand how other verticals operate. What uh, what are some of the priorities at an organization level? Uh, and that I'll cover a little bit more uh, in the second section of this presentation, which is about the fellowship. There's yeah, Manish. Also, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I think Manish had his hand up. Yeah. Yeah. my question is regarding that my vertical is cross linked interlinked like just like uh, you have mentioned environment and human my uh, social idea related with the especially with the livelihood interlinked with the environment just like the green jobs do you can uh, means 
concerned about also this vertical which is interlinked with the environment as well as the human yeah so i think actually all our verticals definitely have some kind of linkage you know education has impact on women's employment but it also has impact on health same for vice versa so all are definitely linked uh, i think very rarely is a solution only focused on one area uh, i think our fellows will still be placed into one team so that their primary focus will be that vertical uh, but we do try to measure the environment the overall impact of an organization which is as you are you said right it's not limited to one okay maybe last question and then we move on to the next section more about the fellowship i see actually a lot of questions are coming on the fellowship specifically so we'll we'll probably save them to the end which seems so janya would answer most of these questions okay so janya why don't we actually proceed with the next section i think many folks are curious about what the fellowship would be sounds good yeah so um Asha has given you a little bit of background on ACT as an organization, the kind of work that we do. I'll be speaking specifically about the fellowship, the program, how it's structured, what we're looking for. Hopefully, answer a lot of the questions that you guys have already raised. And then, of course, at the end, we we'll have time for you to ask more specific questions. So, what is the ACT fellowship? Uh, now, this is a program that we've designed very mindfully to give people participating in this program real-world experience. of the very exciting world of adventure philanthropy and how this is being used to create impact at scale now ashray touched a little bit about venture philanthropy and what this looks like but it is a fairly new model it is a fairly new space that is still very much evolving in terms of how can this newer type of philanthropy really create impact at scale compared to other traditional forms of giving right uh the fellowship I, i know what one of the questions that was asked was around the types of careers that the fellowship will allow you to build uh and this fellowship is really designed to allow you to pursue multiple different opportunities after you've completed it right so whether you're already in the social impact space or you're looking to pivot your career uh, uh you can be using this opportunity to build a career in social impact you can use this opportunity to develop uh, a career in impact investing or if any of you have any aspirations to become a social entrepreneur for yourselves then this is really going to give you an opportunity to develop some of the skills really refine how you're thinking about your ideas as well right uh highlighting and reiterating some of the key points about the fellowship which i'm sure most of you already know uh but just to make keep in mind this is a 9 month opportunity it will start in the middle of september and go on until the middle of june it is full time so we do expect full fellows to be fully invested in this program it's not a part time opportunity uh we wouldn't uh be looking for someone who's studying or working alongside to be a part of this fellowship secondly like i've mentioned earlier you will be working closely on one of the four impact spaces that ashray mentioned so whether it's edtech whether it's public health whether it's climate action or whether it's gender inclusivity each fellow will be tagged to a specific vertical uh by the team um uh, and thirdly like i said uh this is going to be a cohort based fellowship so there will be five fellows who will be part of this year's fellowship program and peer to peer learning is going to be as critical a part of the entire piece as what you will be learning working with your vertical team yeah now what to the next 9 months or what are the 9 months of the fellowship really look like right so there'll be two parts of your experience one is as a part of your vertical team itself so once you're tagged to a vertical about 70% of the fellowship will be uh in terms of working directly with those vertical teams and members there and as a part of that there's two pieces of work that you'll really be doing right so one is like ashray mentioned really getting into the grant making process itself uh so everything from sourcing to due diligence to presenting uh, a solution in front of the investment committee based on our experience from our first fellowship cohort this year fellows can expect to lead at least one investment committee process by themselves right so right from finding an interesting organization that we would want to make a grant to really leading the conversations with that organization and then finally making a presentation in front of the investment committee for their approval uh at least one we also expect that you might be involved in more of these processes right so that's going to be a big part of your day to day uh and this is a big part of all of the teams day to day right so one key thing to note is that fellows are pretty much part of the full time team at act you're part of every meeting uh, that the full time team is part of you're part of all strategy uh, uh step backs you're part of the regular work that the vertical does so 
a big part of what all verticals do at act is the grant making and really finding these interesting and exciting organizations so that will be a big part of your day to day apart from that like ashay mentioned uh, collaboration co- as a the, as a platform for collective action is a big part of our identity as well so over the past year many fellows most of our fellows have actually led some of these collaborative initiatives themselves right and i'll give you an example of some of these uh but the education vertical for example leads a collaborative program called the tech advisors for social change uh and this is basically a program where we bring together senior technology professionals from startups and vcs and the technology world and pair them with ngos who are really looking for this type of support and expertise and it's a it's a very curated program where we handhold and really do the matching process we also then take them through a 10 to 14 week different 10 to 14 week program where they're assigned specific problem statements and really uh, go on that journey with them right so that's an example of one of the collaborative platforms that we operate as act uh, there's also the implementers network where we try and connect organizations that run health centers on ground with high quality innovations that they can use and that they wouldn't otherwise have access to so all of these uh, you'll find more information about these on our website on our social channels but these are all platforms that fellows have come in fellows have really led and fellows have really taken charge of and 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 built over time so that, that's what your work will look like at a vertical level and with your uh, specific teams as a cohort of course you have access to the larger why act community and, and ashray briefly spoke about the the network that we have access to uh be they industry experts startup founders uh vc partners etc and also obviously the act team itself so whether it's through master classes whether it's through field visits to portfolio organizations investment committees themselves or quarterly strategy meetings that we do as a team regularly you will be able to learn with the act team from our entire community of advisors as well and then lastly as a cohort uh, of five uh, and again one of the things we've noticed this year is that the fellows themselves come with very very diverse experiences and backgrounds so this year we've had people who come from a background in government consulting a background in research a background working in a grassroots ngo working in a startup uh, so peer to peer learning is really core to the entire experience according to us and we do deliberately design for this through a fellow project which each, which you as a cohort will really lead for act and this is going to be a live problem statement that we're currently grappling with uh, the current uh, fellow cohort has already done a great job with their fellow project and they really left behind uh, a legacy for the entire organization even beyond the verticals in which they're working in so The idea is that as a group of 5 you work together on a problem statement that really allows you to design again and implement a solution end to end that act can then take forward to really grow its impact. So these are some of the different activities that you can be expected to be doing over the course of the 9 months. What does it really look like to be working at act, right? So we're a really young organization with a little over 3 and a half years old and hence we really are quite like a startup ourselves in how we work right uh, we're a small team uh, we're about 12 full time members very very diverse in our backgrounds many of us are, are what we call ourselves as hybrid so done a stint in corporate done a stint in non profits now we're at act uh, and each vertical is very small tightly knit team so there will be two to three members full time Uh, and our horizontal team has which is the platform team has five members across different functions like finance communications brand etc we've also been fully remote right from the very beginning so act like ashay mentioned was born during covid and we've always been a remote organization uh, most team members are based in bangalore delhi or mumbai uh but but we operate entirely remotely apart from meetings where we do uh, schedule quarterly to come together as a team and and we're quite proud of how we've managed to create ways of working create rituals and processes around just being very effective in our work despite being fully remote some of our core values and and you'll see some of this in terms of when we talk about who we're looking for and 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 who we want to really join the fellowship itself so bias for action right uh every member of the team has a very very strong sense of ownership a strong sense of accountability towards not only their own work but really trying to make the organization succeed so nobody is going to be looking over your shoulder constantly telling you what to do there is an expectation that everyone does take up the responsibility of their work but also really see what it will take to make act successful and impactful 
right um collaboration is not just a buzzword for us whether it's internal collaboration within our own team or whether it's external collaboration with stakeholders that always trying to figure out new ways in which we can partner with the ecosystem new ways in which we can add value to different people because at the end of the day we do realize this isn't something that we can do alone and impact isn't something that we can achieve totally through our own work and it is going to take many many different people from many many different walks of life to come together to do this empathy and inclusivity uh this is for everyone right this is not just empathy and inclusivity towards each other but it's towards the end users that we're trying to work with it's towards the entrepreneurs that we speak to every day so making sure that we're really putting ourselves in their shoes and trying to irrespective of whether we fund an entrepreneur or not irrespective of whether we fund a solution or not trying to make sure that we're able to either add value to them in some way by connecting them to someone else uh by offering them some advice uh by giving them some resource that they might not be aware of empathy towards the end user to make sure that these solutions are really really what will actually move the needle on some of the problems we're trying to tackle uh this is something that's quite core to what all of us believe in and the last two are sort of related right so whether it's overcoming adversity whether it's imbibing humility and honesty i think all of us know that the work we do is this it's not that every solution we fund is going to create impact not every solution will work out and we're honest enough to know that you know we're okay with that we do believe in taking that risk we do believe in taking that chance on organizations and on entrepreneurs that we believe in and and again that's something that we believe sets us apart from a lot of other philanthropic funders in the space right who are looking for very proven models who are looking for very um specific solutions that they believe work uh we're always trying to identify new models new innovations new uh, service delivery uh, examples that can be successful if they work but may or may not work for themselves right so in that sense very venture capital in our approach we believe that there will be a high degree of failure but when we do succeed we do believe that they will be disproportionately high uh outcomes that can be achieved from that uh these are just some of the images from different field visits from different conferences the fellow induction we also do find time to have fun we have a annual retreat uh as a team where we come together and really just try and get to know each other and bond a lot more every team meeting that we do we we do have a lot of fun activities that are planned around it and at the end of the day as a small team we are very closely knit and we are very approachable and and we're all accessible to each other whenever we do need help on anything uh now i think that's enough you've heard from us uh i asha and i have given you a lot of uh information but i think what would be most helpful is for you to hear from some of our fellows ex fellows themselves who've just completed their fellowship uh so i'd love to invite ananya to share a little bit about her experience uh over the act fellowship ananya uh comes from lsr she's done internships at ip global uh and another organization she's now currently pursuing her masters at hcc paris uh but ananya over to you to share a little bit about your fellowship experience yeah uh hello everyone i hope you can hear me on clearly so hi i'm ananya and i've worked as a fellow in education vertical and uh to be honest i clearly remember that around the same time last year i was in your position wondering and curious to learn about the act fellowship and deciding if it's the perfect opportunity for me and you know some of the questions that were popping in my mind is that what's so different about act and what does the fellowship offer to someone like me who is just starting out her career and what can one expect to learn well now after the fellowship uh, as i reflect now i can definitely say that firstly act is about you know having the passion for impact and innovation for bharat so it's really a space for someone and everyone who wishes to solve for some of the very challenging problem statements and proactively engaging themselves in that uh secondly it's it's an opportunity with tremendous learning and because believe me you will be challenged at every step as you proceed in your fellowship so you will be evaluating some of the new innovating models in all the verticals uh but also brainstorming on very creative and innovative funding models as well which are really uh, you know growing up in the impact space 
and lastly i believe it was an unparalleled networking opportunity as well for someone like me to meet like minded folks in the space from founders funders impact assessment uh, makers so it was a great space for someone who's just starting out her career and have these uh, opportunities at hand to explore now uh, throughout the fellowship one of the key things i learned was how the vc style investing is married with social returns and you know and how we evaluate creating impact at scale so how to source how to lead these conversation with different founders measure the impact that they are making make the presentations to the board members or the ic members um and apart from that oh, one of the key highlights was that uh, i had the chance to lead and expand the tech advisors for social change you know initiative so uh, while i was sourcing uh, you know some of the impactful edtech startups i also had the chance to interact with different tech advisors and founders and you know collaborate with them with on experimenting new ideas and help them propagate the change so uh but i think one of the closest memories and fun memories about act was also organizing the first ever act summit this year which happened in may and it brought some of the big major names in the impact space under one roof so i can definitely promise that act fellowship will be lots of fun and lots of learning with numerous field visits numerous interactions evaluations of different uh, models and team step backs and plus i think uh the one on one interaction with the apps board uh, board advisors and ic members so now i as i complete the act fellowship i am preparing uh, to continue my masters at hec paris where i'll be specializing in sustainability and social innovation and i i think uh, act has uh, fueled my passion for exploring my career in impact investing specifically and identifying and learning about the new innovative funding models that are emerging in impact space Thanks, Ananya. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, if anyone has any questions for Ananya, please do drop them in the chat box, uh, and we'll try and, and Ananya can take some of those on. Uh, handing over to Gulam. Uh, now, Gulam's uh, background is he's from IIT Bombay. He's been a research associate there, and now he's currently actually joined Act full time as a manager in the Act for Health team. So, over to you, Gulam, to talk a little bit more about your experience. Uh, thank you, Sir Sajaniya. So hi everyone. So great to see some of the like like the enthusiasm that we have been bringing to this discussion here. So uh, I'll just uh, so as Sajanya mentioned. So I come from uh, like uh, uh, engineering backgrounds and after just after my graduations, uh, I started with Tata Cancer Hospital. Was leading some of the uh, like cancer research there, but somehow I felt that like uh, the exploration phase of where whether I fit into the research. Uh, is something that i felt requires a lot of patience you know like uh, and i was not uh, i'm not I, i i like something of a very quick uh, feedback in terms of what i do so so that's where i thought uh, uh, that's where where i thought uh, like heard of something called impact investing and it somehow resonated with what i uh, like bring in bring in you know so uh, and like uh, that was the whole reason i thought of trying out like applying for the act fellowships and uh, and i would say like that uh, over the over the period of 9 months the uh, the kind of learning that i had the kind of people that i met kind of the solution that i laid has definitely uh, made me a much more uh, like inform much more like like mature in terms of how i look at the whole ecosystem as of now so as a part of the act uh, of fellowships i work with health verticals and uh, like one of the major advantages was that i was embedded with the health health core uh, like core team and i was evaluating some of the cutting edge startups deep tech startups that was coming in uh, like uh, like uh, coming in uh, for the evaluation so that gives me a breadth of understanding of 
uh, like not of some particular disease but understanding of the whole public systems you know some of the flaws so of the strength of those public systems and where as an act which you have might have heard of the collective could come as and solve some of those challenges so that is something that i was a part of but at the same time that the more interesting and more uh, like uh, like the valuable part for me was working alongside a very like great team who were very driven and impactful and uh, and i also got the opportunity to uh, what you see what you what you say is something like apprenticeship apprenticeship model where you are working alongside a very very experienced venture capitalist and he is guiding you through each and every step of the process of the grant evaluation so i think one of the key learning for me has been to really look at startups and see whether we it will fit into our uh, like uh, like like uh, our our thesis or not and at the same time see whether the start, startup has a potential to scale uh, and make impact uh, in in uh, like the like in for bharat uh, as well and going forward i would say that over the nine, last 9 months i uh, uh, kind of on a sweet spot where kind of my aptitude uh, aptitude and uh, like impact as well as my uh, like the passion for health intersected you know so and that is where i think i i, I thought uh, that this is a space uh, that i really fits in and i continued uh, i uh, like and then after i decided that i will continue here and explore more because uh, because i feel there are a lot of things that uh, like uh, like that we can do and uh, I, i can do as a part of my fellowship uh, as a part of my role here but uh, like uh, like uh, as uh, ananya mentioned that like the, our team uh, that uh, like uh, a uh, working here and has always been fun and challenging for me and we have always uh, i have always uh, had the opportunity to b- go deeper into some of the verticals as well as also get the breadth of the learning that i could get from all some of the other verticals uh, that i got the opportunity to work with so yeah i think uh, like uh, feel free to uh, ask any questions that you may have thank you questions in the chat uh, ananya and gulam please do look at the chat and, and answer any questions that are coming up there uh, in the interest of time we'll just keep going uh, i just have one or two more small pieces of information to share and then we'll open up for questions just give me a second yeah so i think this was a question that some of you had asked in terms of what are some of the things we're really looking for in fellows right so there's obviously the eligibility criteria itself uh, which we put down uh, which is we're looking for resident indian citizens a graduate from any university and at least 2 years of work experience now not specific work experience in in any specific sector or any specific type of industry but just 2 years of experience in general but apart from these criteria i think there are some personality characteristics some, some people we know will really thrive at act will really succeed and really enjoy the kind of work that we're doing which is what i want to talk a little bit more about right now i spoke about some of the values that are very key to what we do uh, and that reflects in the type of people we're really looking to join us as fellows as well right so the first is really entrepreneurial self starters so people who have a deep bias for action people who are very comfortable taking the lead and really jumping in and volunteering to 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 take up some responsibility people who can work independently but also as a part of a team uh, i think that's very very important for us at act obviously someone who is someone someone who's very deeply invested in social impact uh, and this can be in any different capacity it doesn't mean you've necessarily worked in the social impact space but if this is something you care about this is something that you wanted to explore i think the fellowship is a great opportunity for you to see what that looks like the third is someone who's passionate about innovation in tech right and and this is i think again something that is is sets act slightly apart because social impact and change can be done in many 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 different ways however as an organization we feel that the value we add is really in terms of leveraging technology and innovation for social impact so if you care about the latest tech trends if you're interested in seeing how can technology really change the world i think this fellowship is a great opportunity for you and then lastly venture philanthropy itself right now this is a new and emerging space it's something that's continues to rapidly change on a day to day basis there aren't a lot of organizations 
doing venture philanthropy in the world so if you are interested in really trying to see how can venture capital approaches be applied to create social impact again i think this is something that we're really looking for in come fellows who are coming in as well and just to wrap up in terms of what does the process look like uh, we've already launched applications for this year's fellowship the deadline for submitting your application is 7th august however having said that interviews have already started so the interviews and the selection process is rolling which means as in when we find candidates that we are uh, excited about and that we do feel fit our requirements we are going to be making those offers sooner rather than late so please do not wait till 7th august to submit your applications and do submit that in as soon as possible once you submit your application you'll hear very shortly from someone in the team to set up an interview uh with some of our team members and then post that we'll get back to you with a decision um you can also write to me at my email id which is down here if you have any more specific questions that aren't addressed through this webinar and i'll try my best to either answer it myself or connect you to someone in the team uh we are a small team and do have limited bandwidth so i may not be able to respond to each and every one of you but but please do reach out and i'll try and get back to as many of you as i can uh just as you look at the application some tips please do make sure you do spend some time on this application the questions we put down there have been put down very deliberately for us to really understand why you think this is a good opportunity and whether you whether you would be a right fit for for the fellowship be yourself please don't try and, and and answer what we think you would we would want you to answer because again this is a commitment that you're making to yourselves uh, as much as us so be yourself be honest be authentic and like i said do apply as soon as you can because we are going to be making these decisions on a rolling basis um and yeah that's all we had to share uh opening up for any questions that anyone might have uh so richi after the application form is submitted uh we will get back to you uh and set up an interview with two members of our team uh which will happen within a week or so in terms of setting up that interview and after that in a couple of weeks post that you will be able to hear back in terms of uh whether this has, whether your application has been uh, accepted or not uh there is no age limit akshaya uh we have fellows who are from different age backgrounds etc so we don't have a limit in terms of a, a higher limit like i said at least 2 years of work experience is what we're looking for uh after the cohort ends i think everyone has a slightly different journey some fellows from the previous fellowship have continued with act as full time team members some have gone ahead to pursue masters or further education some are trying to explore the startup space and and you know start ventures and ventures of their own as well uh we do not work on saturdays and sundays our working day our timings are from monday to friday um everyone who submits an application will not receive an interview call then my there is a short listing process that follows after the application and then the interviews are set up accordingly uh, so just, there are some questions on remote work and also on the rolling basis of the yeah, do you want to just take that on akanksha Sure, happy to. Um so yes, we're very proud on being a remote workplace um given we came out of covid, we've been trying to redefine what the workplace looks like. Having said that, our learning is that hybrid is potentially the best way um for act at least to achieve and really do justice to its mission. So what that means is um you know, you the the three cities where you can be located are Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore. um and typically staff members do work you know from their homes cafes uh most days of the month um but every two weeks and definitely once a month there'll be spaces where you'll be able to come together with team members either in your city or whole team um in one of the three cities that were located in so the only constraint is make sure you're located in a delhi bombay or bangalore in terms of um the rolling application is an important piece what that means is if we find our five fellows um you know sooner than the deadline then we will actually close the applications uh prior to what is currently the deadline which is august 7th um to be really honest with folks we've not 
filled all five spots so there are still a few spots that are open so applications are not yet the spots aren't yet filled but having said that um we do encourage folks if you are sure that this is an opportunity you want to explore the sooner you put in your application the higher your chances uh sunil i see you have your hand raised uh please go ahead and unmute and ask your question uh thank you for giving this opportunity uh so uh my question is that i am from tech uh research background i'm from biotechnology background so does that after post graduation research experience will be considered as a uh uh that work experience like two year work experience you required like i have seen gulam uh, linkedin profile he was in iit bombay as a research assistant for three years so i i have the similar kind of like uh, journey but I, i have been working in a interdisciplinary area like biotech and then business strategy and part of uh, currently i am in a fellowship journey so my fellowship journey is in uh, it will end in uh, by the end of this month so that 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 wise I, i have a question like the research journey will consider as a work experience and also i am currently in a fellowship non academic fellowship kind of startup uh, biodesign kind of fellowship so does this thing will be also considered as a this uh, experience we here that whatever that we have to provide in that uh, initial application form yes yes short answer is yes uh, absolutely counts as experience thank you for class uh rachit if uh, so this is a full time fellowship so if you are already working at a full time job uh, it would not be possible for you to take up this fellowship unless you're planning to stop that job um we do expect it to be a fairly intensive and immersive experience so again to chat to your pro- point uh, we do expect fellows to take this on full time uh and and really commit to it because i think that just adds to the richness of the entire experience uh andre i'm just and you can sorry you can go ahead and unmute i think you had a question yes thank you um i my question is more along the lines of the fellowship details itself in the sense that uh what kind of uh, uh ticket sizes do you guys support the companies at and uh, how long does that process in terms of reaching the stage of monitoring and evaluation really entail given the fact that the fellowship itself is 9 months ashray do you want to answer that question sure so a few things and i'll i'll broadly generalize it there's obviously variety in different verticals and different deals uh, broadly we are looking since we're looking for early stage startups Uh, our ticket size is roughly around uh, rupees one CR for about a year period. Um, the process of selecting a startup can take anywhere from one to maybe say three months. At least we try to fit it within that time period. Uh, monitoring, I would say, is actually something that's always on. It's not necessarily that only after two years we'll monitor. Yes, there might be studies that happen after a year or after enough time has passed for the impact, but. because we most of our organization are tech based data is pretty much coming on a daily basis so you know at least every 3 months you will do a check in with a startup and see okay what has really happened in terms of data anything else any other you... questions on the chat that we've not responded to please do raise your hands if we've not gotten to your questions on chat and we're happy to have you unmute and share I just wanted to quickly answer Richie's question. Uh, so you will hear from us definitively. So if you've made it to the next round, you'll hear from us. If you haven't, you'll also hear from us. So I'd say if you haven't heard till now, just hang on and um, give us a chance to get back to you. I think we answered all the questions. Um, thank you so much for turning off your cameras, engaging with us, and asking all these wonderful questions. Uh, if there's anything we didn't answer or anything that comes up later, uh, th- we have been sharing, putting all the information about our fellowship on our website or our LinkedIn, uh, most most of the social media. So you can definitely, I think, first stop would be our website. Uh, do check out all the information there is in FAQ as well. But again, if as Akanksha said, if you have any questions that are not answered, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love the email ID here as well. Thanks for joining, right. folks. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the day. Bye.